Hey guys, Joyboy here. Got another theory for you. In this one, I'd like to discuss Buggy the Clown, um, what it means to be the Pirate King, and how this can help us figure out what the One Piece cannot be. So I'm going to start off with a bit of an interesting fact. Buggy the Clown is one of the most reoccurring uh, characters that isn't a straw hat in the entire One Piece manga. Um, and he's also somebody who's looking to become the Pirate King. But in all the times that we've ever seen him, he has never once mentioned a desire to find the One Piece. So this brings up an interesting point. How can someone desire to be the Pirate King and not, at the same time, not desire to find the One Piece? Let's explore this topic. So, let's begin by asking an uncommon question. How is the Pirate King explicitly defined in One Piece? Um, no, I'm not talking about how, how someone would become the Pirate King. I'm asking what is the essence of what the Pirate King actually is? What does it mean to be the Pirate King? Um, and there's only a couple definitions for the Pirate King given to us from the manga. Um, this one is from Luffy. The Pirate King is the person with the most freedom on the sea. Another, another uh, quote from Luffy is that the Pirate King is the king of the sea. And then the third one, and I don't actually have a citation for this, but this is um, a common one, is the Pirate King is the strongest pirate alive. According to this information, we can learn a lot about what makes the Pirate King unique and not, for instance, a Yonko or a, you know, some other kind of pirate. The Pirate King is the king of the sea. This almost directly implies that the Pirate King, like a regular king or monarch, is the supreme power and or governing entity of the sea. This suggests that the Pirate King is the most powerful person on the sea and determines the rules, or lack of rules, one must follow when entering his domain, i.e. the sea. This is similarly echoed when Luffy defined the Pirate King as the person with the most freedom at sea. This also suggests that others can't force the Pirate King to do anything, and that the Pirate King has the freedom to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Only the strongest pirate alive would be able to force others to follow his will and prevent others from imposing their will on him. Basically what this means is the, the term Yonko is counter to the existence of the Pirate King. The Yonko basically mean the four kings of the sea. They are equal. The Pirate King, however, is the supreme entity of the sea. If you have a Pirate King, i.e. the best pirate alive, then you can't have a Yonko, or in this case, four Yonko. So let's go to a second question here. Uh, according to One Piece, how did Gold Roger exactly earn the title of Pirate King? Notice this is different from the previous question we asked, which was how, do, how is Pirate King explicitly defined? This is more of what were the accomplishments that Gold Roger had specifically that earned him the title of Pirate King? Um, at the very beginning of One Piece, we're given this famous quote, wealth, fame, power. The man who achieved everything in life like none before him was the Pirate King, Gold Roger. Um, this is a quote here from Garp. Roger never ran from danger. He faced it head on always. This is what made him the Pirate King. And then the third quote is, um, Roger conquered the Grand Line, which was previously considered to be impossible. Notice here that we are explaining what Roger did in order to earn the distinction of Pirate King, not what the Pirate King is. Let's look at what Roger's accomplishments are and see what they all have in common. The first quote um, from the beginning of One Piece says that Roger obtained pretty much everything important you could obtain, unlike anyone before him. The second quote given uh, from Garp emphasizes that Roger was not afraid of anything and wouldn't let anyone prevent him from doing as he wished, even if it meant putting his life on the line. It also suggests that Roger was probably um, in almost constant danger, much like Luffy is today, and most likely accomplished a huge number of amazing feats along his way to becoming the Pirate King. And the third quote is also showing how Roger achieved something impossible, um, and, and it really emphasizes his su superiority on the sea. The commonality between all these reasons is that Roger, in a number of situations, made the impossible possible. The key point I'm trying to make is that the Pirate King is not akin to turning Super Saiyan, like in Dragon Ball Z. It's not an ability, but rather a title or a moniker. The people of the world are the ones who can give or take away the title. This is why public perception of your greatness is vital to becoming the Pirate King. To be the Pirate King, the vast majority must believe you to be the strongest and greatest pirate alive. 
So what made conquering the Grand Line so important for Roger wasn't necessarily the physical act of doing it. It was that conquering the Grand Line was previously thought to be impossible by the general population. This is confirmation of why the Pirate King isn't defined as the person who conquered the Grand Line, but defined as the most powerful pirate on the sea who cannot be told what to do. This doesn't mean that a future Pirate King won't conquer the Grand Line though. It just signifies it isn't what makes the Pirate King the Pirate King. Being the strongest pirate on the sea, however, is necessary. If Luffy were to become the Pirate King, what you would see here is a list of Luffy's major accomplishments, including being the first pirate uh, or person in history to attempt and succeed at breaking into Impel Down and being the first person in history to cause a mass breakout from the prison. Both of these are considered impossible feats. Notice how Roger never accomplished this. If we were correct that Luffy will eventually become the Pirate King, following a previously established logic that one would have to repeat the feats of the previous Pirate King in order to become the new Pirate King, then that would force each successive generation of Pirate Kings to accomplish an increasing number of difficult tasks. Thus, the next Pirate King after Luffy would also have to break in and break out of Impel Down in order to earn the title of Pirate King. Doesn't it seem kind of ridiculous to have generations of pirates attempting this? Most likely, you know, a relevant task? Luffy did this because of circumstances. Um, circumstances determined that's what he would need to do in order to achieve what he wanted, um, which happened to be to save Ace. This clearly explains the premise of my post. It's not necessarily what you do, it is how you are perceived globally. So in simplest terms, how did Roger become the Pirate King? Well, he accomplished a staggering number of impressive and even impossible feats, and he probably did this because of his reckless recklessness and his fearlessness. This increased his overall legacy, which is mostly determined by what others think of you and your accomplishments. And most probably he was never, at, never defeated, and could be considered the strongest pirate of the time because of it. Um, basically, Roger could do whatever it is that he wanted to do, wanted to do. there was no stopping him, and he achieved a numerous number of things that nobody considered possible beforehand. So here's the take home message guys. The new Pirate King does not necessarily have to accomplish the feats of the previous Pirate King. The defining tribute that determines whether someone can become the Pirate King is not what he does, it's whether or not he has the power and gall to impress the world in such a manner that he earns the unquestionable distinction of being the strongest and greatest pirate alive in the minds of the people in the world. So what is the point of all this that I'm saying? I'm saying that you don't necessarily have to find the One Piece in order to become the Pirate King. I'm not saying that the, the person who will become the Pirate King won't find the One Piece. I think that those two things are intertwined. But I think that if you know what the Pirate King is, you don't necessarily have to find the One Piece to become the greatest pirate on the sea. I think that that would only be something that would add to someone's legacy and thus their public perception, which could earn them the title of Pirate King, but it isn't an absolute necessity. And just in case you guys aren't completely convinced yet, keep this in mind. Gold Roger did not become the Pirate King because he found the One Piece. That was just the treasure that he collected during his journeys. So given this example, it is very clear that you don't absolutely have to find the One Piece in order to become the Pirate King. So let's go back to Buggy for a second. As I've said previously, Buggy throughout the entire history of One Piece has never once stated that he is looking for the One Piece despite his desire to become the Pirate King. But as I've said here, I don't think that it's necessary or absolutely necessary for someone to look for the One Piece if they desire to become the Pirate King. Because as I've said, the Pirate King is a title that's earned by public perception, and there's lots of other things that you could potentially do, and including your own personal power level, in order to become the strongest and greatest pirate on the sea. Rather than stating that he's interested in finding the One Piece, he actually phrases it in a different way. He states that he's looking for all the world's treasure, rather than the One Piece, and I think this phrasing is really interesting. If you'll remember back at the very beginning of One Piece to Buggy's original chapter, there's an interesting flashback on his time on Roger's crew where he's talking to Shanks and, dis and discussing what treasure actually is. And for Shanks, well, Shanks and Buggy have different definitions for what treasure is. Buggy thinks that treasure is gold and silver, 
while Shanks thinks that treasure can have a deeper meaning. And as we saw in that very same arc, Luffy even has a different definition for what treasure is. Luffy's treasure is his hat, and Buggy cannot understand how Luffy can, can treasure such a worthless item. Given the similarities between Luffy and Shanks and Gold Roger, I think it's safe to say that it's probably likely that Roger also treasured things different to how Buggy treasures them. I think that Roger probably didn't put a high value on gold and silver, like, and had similar treasures to that of Luffy. Given this train of thought, it's not surprising at all to think that Buggy might not be searching for the One Piece. I think that Buggy specifically is looking for all the world's treasure, which is to say all the world's gold and silver, and that Roger's treasure is completely devoid of the things that Buggy values, which would explain why Buggy has never shown any interest for what the One Piece is. I want you guys to realize that Buggy was traveling with Roger on his crew for some amount of years that isn't directly specified. He should know what Roger was collecting. He should know the context of the One Piece regardless of whether or not he actually traveled to Raptal with Roger. So given this, it isn't surprising to think that maybe he doesn't value what the One Piece is. And given this, then we can maybe conclude what the One Piece isn't given what we know about Buggy. So, now the question is, what are the things that Buggy values? If these things were a part of the One Piece, we would know Buggy would be looking for the One Piece, but since he's not, whatever it is that Buggy values can't be part of the One Piece. And I think there's two clear things that Buggy values. The first one is gold and silver. I don't think that the One Piece can contain gold and silver, otherwise Buggy would be looking for the One Piece the same as everyone else. The second thing is weapons, um, and I'll add a little caveat to this, it would have to be a weapon that Buggy can use. We've seen with the Buggy Balls that Buggy does value a good weapon, um, and I think that he would probably be looking for the One Piece if it contained a weapon that he could use. Given this, I don't think the One Piece contains a weapon that he can use. So a lot of people speculate that the One Piece maybe has Uranus. Um, I know I've done some speculation recently that I think Momo is Uranus, but if we throw that out the window for a second and just view Uranus as some sort of weapon, then there's no way that it can be the One Piece if it is a weapon that Buggy can potentially use. And so this also potentially helps confirm another idea which I think is highly supported and at this point almost fact, which is that the Rio Poneglyph is at the very least part of the treasure of One Piece. Um, there were some lines from Robin back in uh, the Skypea arc where she basically confirms that Roger collected the contents of the Poneglyphs and brought their uh, all that information to one location which she determines to be Raftal. Given this, it seems likely that the Rio Poneglyph is uh, on Raftal and that it's probably the One Piece, um, or at the very least a part of the One Piece. But this is some this is a kind of treasure that Buggy wouldn't value and would explain why Buggy doesn't try and or isn't looking for One Piece, the One Piece. Um, knowledge isn't something that Buggy would view as a treasure. And this is going to be a bit of a side, not really where I wanted to, to direct this post, um, but I would just like to say that the original quote from Oda where he says that the One Piece has to be some kind of reward, a lot of people interpret that as it has to be a physical reward. But the definition of reward is a lot more general than that. Um, and it's often stated that knowledge is the greatest reward. Um, so the One Piece doesn't have to be a physical reward, it just has to be a reward. And in this context, I believe that the Rio Poneglyph being part of the One Piece fulfills that need or that, that stated objective that Oda has for the One Piece, which is that it is a reward. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for this particular post. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tell me what you think. Comment uh, what you think the One Piece is. Um, tell me if you think that my evidence for Buggy is conclusive or if you disagree. Um, and 